thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. So Lapidico is an ASX listed uh, company. We've got a market cap of between 200, 250 million dollars. And we're developing a vertically integrated lithium business from mine through concentration to uh, uh, conversion through a chemical conversion plant, which uses our proprietary process technologies. We are um, headquartered in Perth, and that's where our technical capability is. We've got a demonstration plant there. Um, the upstream asset is in Namibia. It's the Karabib project. That's where we will be redeveloping two open pit mines and building the concentrator. And we'll be shipping the concentrate from there to the chemical processing plant uh, in Abu Dhabi. And at the end of uh, the last quarter, we were well funded with over seven million in cash and no debt. This slide here gives you an indication as to the journey that we've been on over the last uh, eight or nine years. Um, it started off in 2013 with the technology as just a concept. Uh, by 2016, that had developed sufficiently to, uh, for the company to list um, when it needed more capital to advance the technology. We've then been through a process of piloting. We've just recently expanded that pilot plant to a demonstration facility. And we're now well advanced on front end engineering and design with the objective of uh, coming into production in 2024. And the other highlight there from 2022, um, we've just uh, in the last few weeks announced a number of uh, uh, additions to the executive management team. And we've got an all Namibian leadership group uh, for the Namibian operations. So this gives you a sense as to uh, the flow of the material, small scale open pit mining. The ore is then trucked to a conventional concentrator. Um, the waste there will be benign and there's no requirement for a tailing storage facility. We'll be co-disposing the relatively modest quantity of tailings with mine waste. The lithium mica concentrate will be then shipped to Abu Dhabi. And the pro main inputs for the process you see there are sulfuric acid, lime, and limestone for neutralization. Um, the uh, obviously uh, energy um, and some natural gas for process heat. But we benefit from six products. And we're, what we're effectively doing here is deconstituting the mineral. And we have no solid process waste coming out of this. And two weeks ago, we were in the UAE. And I'm very confident that we're going to be able to place all of those bulk byproducts into the local markets. So a very, very sustainable process. So this, uh, what you say, see there on the right hand side is a picture of the recent demonstration plant trial. Um, the LMAX process was, is patent protected in the countries that you see there. We're waiting for Canada to come through. Uh, the process uses really ubiquitous equipment used in mineral processing and um, chemical, um, the chemical industry. So it's uh, leach reactors, um, filtration, and crystallization are the main process steps. Uh, maximum temperature we use 120 Celsius, um, and everything's at atmospheric pressure. So when you compare this to spodumene conversion, um, where you're roasting at 1200 Celsius and then calcining at around 300, you can just see how much uh, energy less in en energy intensive the LMAX process is. The our phase one project is designed at 5,000 tons a year of output, but we've started a scoping study evaluating uh, output uh, four times that size. So we do see this as being scalable. The other process technology to, to note here is uh, LOMAX, which uh, we um, uh, put a, uh, applied for a provisional patent application for in 2019. This converts an intermediate lithium sulfate in directly into lithium hydroxide. And most importantly, it does not produce byproduct sodium sulfate, which we saw as a potential fatal flaw for the project, given the fact that that's a very mature market and there's an awful lot of uh, sodium sulfate likely to come on stream over the balance of this decade um, from the uh, production of con conventional uh, lithium chemicals from spodumene sources. Lomax has lower capex, lower opex, and better recovery than conventional processing. So we see that this actually has broader application uh, than just in our projects, which we're, we're focused on lithium micas. 
and we own these, these technologies 100%. The photograph on the right-hand side there you see is the Rubicon deposit um, at Karabib. It's been mined historically for petalite and for tantalite. All of the lithium mica minerals have been left behind. Um, we've done a, uh, a greenhouse gas emissions report uh, by GHD. In summary, our emissions on an integrated project basis are about 25% lower than for a similar um, spodumene, integrated spodumene project but about two thirds of our emissions are associated with the natural gas that we will use for process heat. And we're looking at opportunities in Abu Dhabi where we're building the chemical plant to be using green hydrogen. There's a big government initiative to be developing that as a new industry. And that will drop our emissions by two thirds to being about three tons per ton and probably best in industry. We're, we've got a low um, land, uh, a small footprint, uh, relatively modest water usage and so when it comes down to these key environmental um, elements uh, in the lithium industry we score very well on all of them and we've got water rights for about twice the amount of production that we expect to have from phase one. Um, job creation is obviously very important in the locations we're, uh, we're working in. Uh, we'll be creating about 115 jobs in Namibia, but importantly, downstream from that, we expect that there's going to be about a seven times multiplier. And in the local communities are about five to 7,000 people, so we expect to have an extremely positive um, impact on, uh, on those local communities. So moving on to the project specifically, um, we're about 220 kilometers from the port of Volvish Bay. We've got fabulous infrastructure. Um, the, the only infrastructure we need to develop is a 27 kilometer uh, power spur from the main switch yard. Uh, and that's included in our capex. It's about three and a half million dollars. Um, all the other infrastructure is effectively in. This slide here is a new slide looking at the expiration within the contract area. We have been reasonably slow over the last couple of years with our expiration, largely because of COVID. But in the last couple of months, we've managed to renegotiate land access agreements with uh, some of the local landowners. And I was on site last week and we had uh, a second drill rig turning up on site when I was up there. And we're going to start drilling these, uh, these uh, targets and deposits quite aggressively. The objective is to develop phase one life to over 20 years from the current 14 and build a resource base for a larger scale phase two. And we, we've started drilling back in January, so we're expecting to get uh, assays any time now. You can see here the fundamentals for, for phase one. Uh, lithium hydroxide production is just under 5,000 tons a year annually. That's about a quarter of a typical spodumene project. And the reason why we're at that scale is because we can get attractive economics at that scale. We are proactively managing risk. So from a CapEx perspective, 140 million is an awful lot more manageable and lower risk than some of these spodumene projects that are maybe up close to a billion dollars. That is a um, May 2020 figure. So we're uh, like a podium's doing the front end engineering and design work now and we'll have new control estimates probably in July. So the figure is going up, but putting uh, revised lithium price, uh, prices through the model, we would expect to get a net improvement in project economics. And uh, with the byproduct credits, we do expect to be very competitive from a, a cash cost perspective, all in sustaining costs. So any discussion about lithium is incomplete with, without uh, talking about finance and offtake. In December, we announced that we'd entered into a seven year uh, binding offtake arrangement for all of our lithium hydroxide with the European trading company Traxxas. They've been arguably trading lithium chemicals longer than anyone else since 2009. And we're now working very closely with them to be placing that material with final consumers. Uh, Traxxas is also supporting us with placing the cesium. Uh, there isn't time really to get into the detail on that market, but it is uh, both the cesium and rubidium are um, on the US's list of 35 critical minerals. And we've also done very well, I think, in securing markets for, for the bulk products. We signed a mandate agreement with the US government's International Development Finance Corporation in 2020 
um, for debt funding to the Namibian part of the project. And they're now close to completing confirmatory due diligence. Um, and we're also well advanced now with, in discussions with commercial lenders for the Abu Dhabi portion of this project. Uh, we've also appointed Jeffries to support us from an equity perspective, uh, looking at uh, strat possible strategic involvement in the project. Last year, we had several inbound um, unsolicited um, inquiries, and so we're now building on that and expect to um, uh, be finalizing that process this next quarter. So in summary, we've got a unique deposit here and a unique project. Uh, we've got the world's only undeveloped ore reserve of cesium or iridium, and we're looking at bringing a new source of uh, lithium hydroxide to the market in 2024. Thank you very much.